Day 16. Looks like the spider finally caught itself a fly here on the Australian dollar Swiss franc pair. £99.78 from the trade as we do hit the take profit today. Less off a £1.84 commission and a £5.53 swap, leaving us with a 92.41 net positive from that trade. And so it does get us back into it a little bit. Three losing trades, one winner now. If we get those two to one risk reward ratio trades we won and get a win for them, I think we can certainly get it back. No open trades for us. We'll have a look through those charts, see if we've got any signals. Aussie dollar, US dollar, stochastic has dropped out of the overbought territory. Same on the pound, US dollar here. And the dollar, Swissy. New Zealand dollar, US dollar too. Aussie dollar, Japanese yen as well. That's getting out of the overbought territory. Canadian dollar, Japanese yen, same story. Stochastic, 93.43 out of the overbought. Swiss franc, Japanese yen, that's a signal too. Euro, Japanese yen, they're all coming out of the overbought territory. No oversolds for us. And finally, the New Zealand dollar Japanese yen is coming through with a signal as well. So we've had nine stochastic signals, five of them against the Japanese yen. We're going to go through these channels pretty quick, I think. Pretty big channel on the Aussie dollar US dollar to start us off. That is back one year to the 4th of January. Doesn't look like there's anything for us here. When we look back over that year, nothing in this range at all. Comes down here, storms through, then storms back up. Here it is coming down and it does treat this area as a support level, but not as a resistance level because it bounces upward. This is the closest, but I don't think we actually have a close inside the channel. This was the first one and here it is almost getting outside of it, but obviously it never would because where our channel cuts it off, regardless of where it finishes. So yeah, that was very close to being a return, but the close isn't inside. It's just the high. So we can't proceed on the Aussie dollar, US dollar. We'll rule that one out for now. Again, if our channel is starting from here one year back and we need price to come up and bounce back down, we see it treated as a support level again over here right at the beginning and then across here as well. I think if we zoom in just a month or so ago, yeah, towards the end of November, we see price come into the channel and reverse back out. It's only done it once, but still a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio on this currency, the pound dollar. US dollar Swiss franc, this is a rare one where it's a support level for us coming out of the oversold region. But boy, what a wide channel this is. Going to pull up the ATR quick, actually, just to do a comparison. 56.1 pips on the ATR, 94.4 today. Wow, what a move. Price does come down, but it actually breaks through the channel, even the extra wide channel. Bounces back off there. I think we do have it over here, though. We see a bounce in. There's no close outside. And then out it comes. Same over here. We don't need to go all the way back here. That is June 2021 we're looking at. Price closed inside this behemoth of a channel and reverses back out to the upside. So that's two to one potential then. Don't know how good it's going to be off the basis of the channel, but at least it's going to give us a wide stop loss. Let's keep rolling on through. And if we look back a year, there was nothing for a long time. Was treated as a support level here. We're looking for it to be a resistance level. We do technically get it here, and we actually technically get it twice. Now this is very sketchy because it's in the range, but you see here, price comes up close in the channel, bounces back down. And immediately after, back up into the channel, comes back down again. So that would be a 2 to 1 risk reward ratio on the New Zealand dollar, US dollar pair. Now let's get into these yens. We're looking for it as a resistance level. And we do see one right here. Bounces in, comes back out. That was from a retracement. And let's zoom in on this area here, see if it can be a 2 to 1 risk reward. Yeah, it doesn't look like it actually. Price comes down here, moves straight through the channel back through it again and then back up again doesn't look great from that certainly used it as a support level here and here but no resistance moves on it so only a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio from this aussie dollar yen cad japanese yen we're looking for it as a resistance level we've seen it once there and twice there don't need to go back here that's a two to one risk reward ratio cad yen swiss yen there's nothing from this one we almost get it there but the close just outside the channel and it is at all-time highs, so nothing from the Swiss yen. Euro yen, don't need to go back for this one. We were in it dead recently, and now we're getting the signal again. Clearly a 2 to 1 risk reward ratio. I remember looking back, and we had 4 or 5 bounces. We can be confident in it again. And New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, don't need to go back 2 years on this one either. You see it as a resistance level right there, and over here as well. It's probably another one in this mix as well. It doesn't look like it. it seems quite rangy, but still, nevertheless, a 2 to 1 risk reward ratio is on the card here. That does leave us with seven trade options. That's three on the dollar and four of them on the Japanese yen. 
Because that is quite a lot of overlapping currency entries, I think the best thing to do will be to set aside the one to one risk reward ratio trades and only enter in on the two to one risk reward ratio trades. Aim big and we'll have 0.5% risk for each of those trades, half the normal risk. Let's start with the US dollar Swiss franc, the channel pretty wide here. We'll call that 99 pips. It's going to be 0.5% risk because we've got two US dollar trades that we're going to enter. Would normally be 1%, but we'll half that here. It's a buy trade for us. Here we go. Stop loss and take profit. And yeah, this channel makes it look a long way away that take profit. Don't think we've got a lot of confidence in this one. New Zealand dollar, US dollar. And that'll be 83 pips for the channel. You can see our risk calculator. It's 0 0.08 standard lots. And it's a sell trade. Again, pretty far on the two to one. You can see above the channel there, twice that distance. That seems a long way away. 1,660 points, 166 pips away. Twice the 83. It was a volatile day today, and this is certainly extending some of our take profits. But hey, maybe we are in it for the move. Let's get to the yen trades. Starting with the CAD yen, it's 100 pips. 0 0.08 lots, quite a roundup from 0 0.0752. Selling it off again. Euro Japanese yen at the re up. That's 100 pips as well. Very interesting. Very similar to the CAD yen there. In fact, it'll make it the exact same risk again. 0.5% of our capital at stake as we sell it off. Let's hope for a bit more luck this time around. It didn't go well for us yesterday. Well, it wasn't yesterday, but it was the last trading day that we got knocked out. Straight back into the drop. Another 100 pip, 200 pip take profit. Could get there. It's not beneath the support level. It's looking better. Last up's the New Zealand dollar Japanese yen. We'll call that 88 pips. And it's another bit of a roundup this time to 0 0.09. But of course, the Japanese yen, always the quote currency, the second currency stated. So we're selling off against it again. Let's set this last stop loss and take profit here on the NZD Japanese yen. There it is again, not beneath the support level. So that is five trades, all with their stop loss and take profits there, a two to one a risk reward. Let's hope they can all hit that two to one profit. But we are pretty heavily in on the Japanese yen and the US dollar here. At least we do have that scaled down risk. See how they get on tomorrow. Day 17, not looking good here at all. Our three Japanese yen trades, they've all immediately hit the stop loss this afternoon between 20 past four and a half past five. All of them gone. 0.5% risk on each of them, so 1.5% of our capital down. That's £153.66 for just over £50 loss to trade. New Zealand dollar yen here, you can see from the close straight back up there. Not a lot to assess about the trade. Just reversed against us. The stochastic not back in the overbought territory yet. 93.15 is the reading. CAD yen, same as well. Hasn't gone back into the stochastic overbought. 94.37. So you see that immediate reversal from the close, a price pushing up, just overall a bad day for the yen, but it cuts the deepest on the euro yen, look at this, oh man the stochastic. So it comes out of the overbought region here, we get in, straight back into it, out we go, miss the drop from the next day which signals us back in, and way out up the top there, we are gone. Fortunately this one too has avoided going back into the stochastic reading, but with two losing trades back to back like that. Makes you feel like we haven't seen the last of this pair. The other two active trades, they are a little bit against us. US dollar, Swiss franc. This was the one with the wide channel and that take profit level way out there. Two to one ratio. It's gone against us. We are $10 down on the trade, but it's pulled back from the lows. Hopefully we see a continuation on that. And New Zealand dollar, US dollar, similar situation. We're in with a sell trade. Today's brought a green candle. Had a bit more of a loss there, $15 down. Again, we've got that two to one risk reward ratio, of course, with the take profit way down there. Can barely see it. Don't feel confident in these US dollar trades. Two to one, it just seems like a bridge too far, especially for the stochastic signals. But we are in it to win it. Maybe we can get ourselves into a new trade today and get some gains rolling. Pound US dollar, that one wouldn't have gone so good. If we jumped in that one, it would have been a sell trade. Might not have hit the stop loss. Yeah, wouldn't be good. Look at the dollar yen push into new highs. Way up there now. Looks like we might be a bit lucky where we took profit on this Australian dollar Swiss franc trade yesterday. Price has gone green there. Would have been disappointed if we hadn't tagged the profit level. Pound New Zealand dollar. Wouldn't mind getting a signal from this one. We can see a bit of a reversing candle happening there. The bulls were in control, but since then, bears step onto the scene. 
it comes out of the stochastic region with price around about this area. If we can encompass that, if we get a one risk reward ratio from there and a second from there, maybe, maybe. New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, that goes into the oversold territory now. This was the trade where we got knocked out right at the very top of the second day. Could find ourselves looking at a buy trade for it soon. This is impressively flat on the New Zealand dollar Swiss franc pair. The last couple of weeks, barely any movement, extremely low volatility going on. Unremarkably remarkable. No new signals for us to check out with the stochastic though. Maybe we'll have something tomorrow. We've got a few charts in the overbought or oversold territory. I wouldn't mind getting in at the beginning of an endured reversal. At the moment though, it doesn't feel like the stochastic is going to get us there. We're back. Day 18, not much moving on these trades. They have gone a bit to our favour today, which is quite nice. Still not in profit just yet, but looking a bit safer than they were yesterday. US dollar Swiss franc, $4 down. You can see the movement there, about 0.25% again. And pretty similar on the New Zealand dollar US dollar. This one had made a run for the stop loss. Didn't really get much past about halfway, two thirds there. And similar situation here, four pounds down. Nothing to do with the trades. Let's see if there's anything else going on on any of those other charts. US dollar Japanese yen. It's going to have a bit of a red day, but not going to come out of the overbought region. Going to take more than that after the run up it's had over the last couple of weeks. Here we go. We've got the Euro CAD coming out of the oversold area today. 2.35 was the closing stochastic reading. All the way up at 15.268 could be the signs of reversal. Let's just see if there's any other stochastic signals for us before we get any further. Euro pounds still oversold. New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar as well. That comes back for us. This was when we had that sell trade. Got knocked out there. Suddenly just a week later, looking at a buy trade now. Let's make up our channel on the Euro Canadian dollar. And we're looking for support level. That white vertical line there, that is back one year. And we are looking for price coming into the channel, closing inside of that, treating it as a support level and bouncing back out. So we can see certainly none of that for the first nine or 10 months. But let's zoom into this area. But we do see price fall consistently on this run here and it closes in the channel doesn't bounce back out of it though it stays all the way across here even that one not a close outside the channel it does make a high but doesn't actually make it fully outside so we have to treat this as the first close here not as a support level it breached through we see it using a minor way as a resistance level there not a strong signal but if we were after it as a resistance that would technically be one risk price cuts up through here but it comes back down all the way through the channel so we cannot take the stochastic signal. Even though we've seen a big build up around this area, there is not enough evidence to show that price will actually bounce from this region, as it certainly hasn't done that for a good while. That was close, but even there it went through. Right, the COVID crash. Wouldn't mind being on that move. No trade though. Let's move on to the New Zealand dollar card. It's the same again. We're looking for it to be treated as a support level because the stochastic is coming back out. And without needing to go back here, I can already see a couple of times where it's happened. This being one, another here, down it comes, boing, back out it goes. And there has been other ones. That one doesn't look like it was a close inside, very close though. This one not a close inside either. But we do have a two to one risk reward ratio on this. Now we are already in a New Zealand dollar trade. Of course we are in with the US dollar. So we're not going to take a full risk here. We're just going to go for 0.5% to the stop loss. Let's check that channel, high to low. That'll be 63 pips to us. So there is our risk calculated on screen. Almost on the head with it, 0.1299 standard lots rounded up to 0.13. And we are buying our way in the stochastic coming out of the oversold region. Bouncing off the support level is what we're aiming for. In we go. Stop loss and take profit. Better had 630 points to the stop loss. And two times that to the take profit, 1260, 126 pips. Well, we could get up to that take profit to be fair. This looks better than some of the other ones we've seen. This is a resistance level we're looking at, and this is right at the bottom of that. So maybe with a good bounce, we could get there. Don't necessarily like the look of the candle, though. It looks like the bulls were in control until the bears took it back over. Stop loss at one times risk always seems a bit close. But nevertheless, there's potential here. There's potential there. There is potential everywhere. Hopefully they're all doing good tomorrow. Let's find out then. Day 19. And we're back to being reliant on these US dollar trades. It is another loss for us. This time, the New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. Already had a loss on this one from the short trade there. That one got knocked out within two days. Now we're knocked out on the first day of this trade. Stochastic almost dipping back into that oversold region. Not looking good at all. £48, 52 pence loss from the trade. And another asterisk next to the stochastic. For those US dollar trades, here you are on the Swiss franc. Still a long way to go. We are going to be in this trade a while. 
Even if we had a big run up on price, it's likely that Stochastic would head to that overbought region and we'd close it down manually. That profit level just seems a bridge too far. Well, you never know. We are $14 in profit for the trade at the moment and not paying too much on the swap, so a roll on. On the Kiwi US dollar, again, the take profit level, it does seem quite far away. But if the trade moves to our favor, we are all for that £22.46 up. A little bit more expensive on the swap, but we don't mind paying as long as we get the winning trade in the end. Doesn't seem probable, but let's check those charts, see if there's any others. Pound Swiss franc still overbought, got to be a reversal due here soon. It's been a run up of almost 3% with only one red candle in that time. Same on the pound New Zealand dollar, what a run. Really has been consistently on the rise and a strong day today. Not much else to write home about tonight though. So we will leave it there with our two US dollar trades, the Swissy and the Kiwi. And we'll come back tomorrow, one more check before the weekend. Day 20, it is the end of the week. And it was the first Friday of the month, non-farm payroll day. Certainly shows on our trades, they are still going, but it was a bad day for us. Dollar Swiss franc first, you can see momentum turns right after price finds a new high. Not ideal there, cut off about a half a percent from where we were up to. Similar to the New Zealand dollar US dollar, although we are about five bucks off once you take the swap into account. But a poor day, a strong day for the New Zealand dollar because it was a weak day for the US dollar. Maybe there's a signal waiting for us right before the weekend though, let's see if we can find it. CAD yen has been circling, Cassie got up to 93 yesterday and even though we see a green day today, it doesn't breach a new high so it's not pushing the stochastic up. The euro great bridge pound, the stochastic turns up but only gets to 3.15 and not enough to push it out of the oversold area yet. Pound Aussie goes overbought, stochastic suddenly up at 100. Let's look for the turnaround, Let's see if we can catch this support level, that would be quite nice. And the pound yen as well, almost getting outside the stochastics overbought region, 95.93, it's coming down from about 97.92 yesterday, but no progression yet, which means we continue to rely on the US dollar Swiss franc and the New Zealand dollar US dollar pairs. Not the best week with all the losing trades this week, but that doesn't mean the stochastic cannot make a comeback. The greatest comeback of all time potentially. Hit some 2 to 1 risk reward ratio trades. There's still plenty of time left for us to get there. Maybe we will. How about that journal before we dip off for the weekend? Our latest and greatest journal. Yeah, not a good week for us. Let's scroll down. You can see the gap. Those are our two open trades on the US dollar. But here are our four losers. Ouch. At least we had reduced risk on them. But those are around about £200 we lost there. Not looking pretty for us. Around about £410 down. This certainly didn't get better. We're up to 10 trades now in 20 days, 4 weeks. So we are averaging a trade every 2 days. I did think they'd be a little bit rarer. But the stochastic is the gift that keeps on giving. And I do think it will keep on giving as the strategy progresses. We'll stick with it though, no matter how bad the journal looks, we will see it through just in case we are on a very unlucky run. I don't think we are, I think we're just trading the stochastic oscillator. But you never know, maybe we are getting the worst of it and there might be a potential comeback in here down the line. We'll be back next week to see if we can start getting that going.